It is said that Strong and his men would make widows of over 100 women over the years. It can be argued, because of Strong's rough treatment of the people of the Appalachian Mountains during the Civil War, that the feuds were more of a way of revenge for the families against him for it. That even though the war between the states had ended, the hard feelings of the people towards Strong and his men would continue in the hollows of the mountains. Come along with us as we walk through the life of Captain William Bill Strong. All aboard the Kentucky Tennessee Living Time Machine. Please fasten your seat belts and keep your arms and legs inside of the vehicle at all times. But to get going, we need your help. We still need to fire up that time machine to transport us. Please help us by clicking on the like, subscribe, and bell notification buttons down below. Not only does this fire up the time machine, but it convinces YouTube that we need a bigger time machine to reach more people who love history as much as you do. Now, back to our story. Early Life Bill Strong was born on December 14, 1825 to Edward Callahan Strong and Elizabeth Spencer Strong in Clay County, Kentucky. He would have several brothers and sisters in his family. They were Virginia Jane Strong Little, Joanna Strong Markham, Robert Strong, Mahalia Strong Duff, Elizabeth Strong, John Callahan B. Strong, and Alexander Strong. Bill Strong would marry Eliza Hargis Strong on February 21, 1853, and together they would have several children together. They are William Flint Strong, Samuel J. Strong, Edward Callahan Strong, Charlie Strong, John Logan Strong, Elizabeth Jane Strong Strong, Lily Strong, William E. Strong, Edna Strong Bach, and Alexander Strong. William Strong during the Civil War Kentucky was a border state and would remain so during the entire Civil War. It would remain neutral as it was an equally divided state as to its sympathies. It was feared that it would also split in half like the state of Virginia did with the formation of the state of West Virginia. According to the web article, Captain Billy Strong and the Red Strings, Part 1. The Strong family owned a family farm for a few generations and Bill's father had owned slaves. They were not overly wealthy, but they were very comfortable in the Appalachian Mountains. While there are some families of the Appalachian Mountains that did own slaves, it was not a very common practice, as life was very hard for those that lived there, and those that did own slaves were seen as very wealthy. When Bill Strong started having control over his father's estate, he freed the slaves. It is not recorded as to the reasons behind this decision. However, the free slaves would go on to become good friends to him and even served with him during the Civil War. Strong would enlist with the regiment very early into the Civil War, but was disappointed when he did not see any action with the battles going on south of him. So he left this regiment and joined the Three Forks Battalion. This battalion was on guard duty over the Appalachian Mountains to counter the growing Confederate forces. But this would not satisfy Strong, so he would lead the 14th Kentucky Cavalry into several conflicts. Strong's Reign of Terror Bill Strong had a very hard look at the growing numbers of the Confederacy in the mountains. He felt that morally he had a duty to his country to weed out these people, so that the Appalachian Mountains would remain peaceful. Though his actions could debatably be seen as going in the opposite direction of the goal that he was trying to achieve. According to the same article, quote, By seeking out known Confederate sympathizers, the company under Strong's command identified their victims. They would visit them in the night, armed, and typically raid their homes, steal property, recruit slaves, destroy furniture, and sometimes even kill members of the household. An account of their habits here. Quote, they then drove away most of Spencer's livestock, went into the house, and split open the feather beds with their knives, and poured jugs of sorghum molasses into the feather ticks. Unquote. Hams, middlings, and shoulders were taken from the smokehouse, 
They also destroyed what other property they could not take with them and carried away one of Jesse Spencer's slaves, unquote. Strong was very well known to find Confederate sympathizers and execute them. According to an eyewitness account, 65-year-old Jesse Spencer was accused of being a Confederate scout and thus was taken to a fence post and shot. A few weeks later, Strong's group would find a man that they had wounded on the night of Spencer's death and would shoot him in the wagon while he was on his way to get medical help for his wounds. While this behavior was not that unusual for war in this area, Strong's methods are still considered to be brutal. A lot of anger built up in the residents of Breathitt County against Strong for his behavior. The returning soldiers were traumatized and found that many of their friends and properties had been killed and destroyed by his orders. It is thought that many of the feuds that Strong participated in was due to the fact that this anger would come back to haunt him as he would have to fight for his survival against different factions who wanted him to pay for his many crimes. The name of Captain Strong would stay with him for the rest of his life as both a way of respect and also ire for his time in service. While the 14th Kentucky Cavalry would be officially disband after the Civil War, many of his men would remain loyal to him and call themselves the Red Strings. They doubled down on their wartime identities in the aftermath of the war. This attitude would lead to the destruction of many lives to come in his feuding days. The Amos Strong Feud We will go over briefly each of the feuds that Strong participated in. For more information about these feuds, please visit our Bloody Breathitt County War playlist. For individual videos, please see our list down below. According to our sources, the feud between John Amos and Captain Bill Strong had three reasons for starting. One reason was that Captain Strong's nephew, Bob Little, was killed during a fight, during a trial in a civil court. The second reason was that John Amos came across a herd of cattle that was meant for Strong and his men. Amos slaughtered the animals and left them for Strong and his men to find them. Another reason could have been according to the weekly intelligencer. Wally Thomas and his sons would steal several of Strong's horses. The open accusation led to the feud between Amos and Strong. There are several fights between the two factions and the Amos family was determined to exterminate Strong and his faction from the mountains. They would besiege Strong's house and keep people captive there for three days until they were rescued. This eventually would lead to a gunfight between the two factions as they would meet at Lick Branch on one fateful day. Amos would be captured and the matter would go to court. The trial would begin on August 5, 1807 and Amos would be the first to take the stand. Joel Elkins would scream liar and grab one of Strong's hidden guns and fatally shoot Amos while he was on the stand. The Tennis Gazette would report that Amos was killed in a shootout by moonlight against Strong's faction and that only one of Strong's men was wounded. No matter how Amos died, the rest of the Amos family would leave the area and resettle in Kansas after several of their men were killed. It was reported that 45 deaths happened because of this conflict. The Callahan Strong Feud this feud would actually run at the same time as the Jet Little feud, but we will take them separately so there is no confusion between the two. It is thought that the feud between Edward Callahan and Captain Strong began because of the killing of Callahan's uncle by Strong. There is also the accusation by Strong that Edward Callahan participated with the Ku Klux Klan, which Callahan denied. Then there is also the reason given that William Callahan shot at John Amos before Strong could get a name upon him to shoot him at the same time, for which Callahan was accused of treachery. There is not a lot of information that we could find out about this particular feud other than three men were killed during the conflict. The two sides would meet in Judge Day's office and sign a peace accord and shake hands. This would not be accepted by either side's men and Strong and Callahan would both be shot to death over the matter. The Jet Little Feud We will cover this feud in our next week's episode, but for now, here is a brief summary. The feud would begin over a three-way election for the seat of County Judge. 
Three men were in the race, ex-judge Edward Strong and ex-judge Butler for the Democrat ticket, and J.M. Burnett for the Republican ticket, who was an attorney at law in Jackson. The Littles, Aikmans, Gambrels, and Allens all favored Edward Strong as their candidate. Bill Strong, Daniel and William Freeman, and other persons favored Burnett as their candidate. Burnett won the election by eight votes. The Little faction questioned the legality of this election to no avail, so they threatened the life of the judge. On November 30, 1878, the Littles and Captain Strong would be on a collision course concerning the county court and its trial of Jason Little for the murder of his wife. A shootout at the courthouse would ensue, with the shooting death of William Freeman, with the Strong faction taking a refuge in a well-stocked cabin, and the Aikman faction taking refuge in the courthouse. Judge Burnett would be killed by the Little faction. A failed jailhouse break was attempted by the Little faction to free Jason Little. This would continue through December of that year, as the Strongs refused to leave the cabin and would shoot people who were on the streets. They said that they would not leave until the deaths of Freeman and Burnett was revenged. According to Judge James Hargis in his interview contained in the Pacific Commercial Advertiser, Kurt Jett Sr. and his son Hiram shot Jerry Little 27 times trying to kill him. Little would recover from these wounds. A few years later, Little would again be shot an additional 27 times and would recover only to be killed in a timber accident. While many sites end the feud with the death of Judge Burnett, it can be argued that it actually ended with the death of Jerry Little. The Death of Strong According to the Tennis Gazette, quote, Captain William Strong was killed near Jackson, Kentucky, Sunday. He was shot seven times from ambush. He was a leader in the Strong-Callahan feud in Breathitt County, settlement of which was agreed upon in the county court three or four weeks ago. It is not known who did the killing. The feuds with which Captain Strong has been identified have cost more than 50 lives in the county. Strong was 72 years old and a captain in the Federal Army, unquote. According to his Find a Grave website article, Strong would have been shot to death on May 9, 1897 in Wick, Breathitt County, Kentucky, and would be buried very close to where he fell. Thank you. We at Kentucky Tennessee Living would like to thank you for watching our video series on the Appalachian Outlaws. Don't forget to hit that like button as the more likes we receive, the more likely YouTube is to suggest our videos to other viewers. Also, to receive notice when we upload a new video, be sure to subscribe and click the bell notifications. We thank you for continuing to support Kentucky Tennessee Living as we are discovering the mysteries of Appalachian history.